Peanut the squirrel and Fred the raccoon, internet sensation Peanut and lesser known Fred were taken by state wildlife officials. And I feel particularly capable of opining about this story because I was a wildlife reporter for many years in Seattle. And I'm having deja vu right now because I have covered several stories that are very similar to this, not the least of which was May the Raccoon. And I'm going to show you May the Raccoon in a second. Let's talk about what happened here, and I'll give you an update on it. As you see the title here, Upstate New York Man Vows Action After DEC Euthanized His Beloved Peanut the Squirrel. I think if you're spelling Peanut's name correctly, it's P apostrophe N-U-T. So just want to put that out there for all of you posting about Peanut. If I understand correctly what happened, if the reports are correct, what went down allegedly is likely someone complained. Why? We don't know yet. The owners have their theories. Someone complains to the state, look, this guy's got a squirrel and a raccoon. These are technically wild animals living at his home. Every state has different rules about this. I'll show you in a second what states allow for you to have a pet raccoon, for instance. But they take his raccoon and take the squirrel and euthanize them, saying that the squirrel bit somebody during the investigation. They had to be killed to be tested for rabies. Okay, let me show you what the owners are saying on Instagram right now. And we will go from there. I think my raw milk order is here. So while I play this, I'm going to go get my raw milk, which is likely outside my house. Here we go. Let me know if you can hear it. Hi, everyone. Um, I don't know how I'm going to say this. I just want to say thank you to all of you. Peanut was the best thing that ever happened to us. And we got confirmation that they put him down. I want to continue to fight this fight as much as I can, but we need all of you to come together and help us. Please continue to help us raise money for the ongoing legal battles and for our nonprofit so we can keep its name alive. Thank you all. Okay, so I did just get my raw milk. What I take from I, I'm seeing here is obviously two very distraught people who have claimed they rescued both of these animals. One, the squirrel, they say was uh, an orphan after his mom was killed, hit by a car. And the raccoon was allegedly dropped off at their front doorstep because they have a wildlife sanctuary now named, um, well, I don't know if it's officially named after Peanut, but they want to use the money they're raising now to continue the wildlife rehab in Peanut's name. To make this story even more interesting, these two also do porn. Uh, allegedly, this was totally separate from Peanut the Raccoon. Sorry, Peanut the Squirrel and Fred the Raccoon. Totally separate. But they admit that it drove traffic to their OnlyFans page. So apparently, the New York Post reporting, they raised like $800,000 in one month on their OnlyFans page and bought this huge piece of property, I think like several hundred acres. And so, so yeah, so it says like Mark, the husband here, it's Mark and Daniela Longo. Did this do wonders to my OnlyFans? Uh, we're, you know, set of the site, this wildlife rehab where Peanut frolicked along with the other animals. Absolutely. It's making a lot of money from this. So they have this whole other side, but they were separated. He says they're totally separated. And they used the money to buy this property, 350 acres near Elmira, New York. And then Peanuts pulling his own weight, paying for this facility where they wanted to have this wildlife sanctuary. Wildlife sanctuary, taking animals. And then Fred the raccoon shows up. Here's Peanut, who has many, many, many followers on Instagram. Um, you know, as you can see, this is Peanuts' page. 
If we go to his Instagram page, has 701,000 followers on Instagram for Peanut. Just as a comparison, I think I have like 1,700 maybe. <laughs> so I, I don't, I do not rival, uh, I do not rival Peanut. However, in some ways, I'm luckier than Peanut because I have had some amazing support. And if you're somebody who wants to support this show before we go into the details of what I think about all this as someone who covered wildlife for a long time, obviously, this couple has now become a symbol of uh, fighting government overreach. Whether you agree or disagree, let's talk about what's really going on, in my opinion. Okay, it's totally my opinion, but what's going on with the dynamics here of like a wildlife agency doing something like this. And is this common? Is this uncommon? And why do they say they do this stuff? If you're somebody who would like to support the show through the mail, PO box three, three, five, five, Danelle in Florida, three, four, four, three, two. I just got this wonderful card and some seeds, uh, some Puerto Rican black bean seeds. Somebody sent me Chris and van case bolt. And they say, dear producers, which are my kids, I'm sending you Puerto Rican black beans that are guaranteed to grow in your, in my Orlando garden. I think they will grow in yours too. So thank you so much. It has been awesome to get uh, mail from people. Really appreciate the support that way. If you want to join the wine club, don't forget that is always an option. You will get six bottles every three months of wine. You cannot get anywhere else. Highly limited edition, small family vineyard. Some vineyards have been in business over a couple hundred years. They handpick the grapes. They use natural fermentation techniques. They are just awesome wines with awesome stories. They taste great. Get uh, into the wine club just to learn about it and have presents on hand that you can give to people. It supports free speech. It supports civil liberties. All the people that I've interviewed during the show uh, is supported in large part by the Allison wine promo wine club. So think about joining, even if you're not a wine drinker, like I said, you'll always have a present, a really great present and, uh, great stories too, that go along with it and obviously supports the show. All right. So let's look at this for instance. All right. This, I, I happen to look up this website, worldpopulationreview.com. It says 2024. I'm not sure if anything's changed in 2024 about pet raccoon legality, but it says that you can own a raccoon in Arkansas, Delaware, Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Nebraska, New Jersey, Ohio, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. And it's not just because of raccoons specifically, it's because of wildlife, generally speaking. Okay, so, so states have these wildlife laws where you, you are allowed to own wildlife or not. And usually, even if it's legal, there's some kind of rule. You have to get a permit. You have to have a particular kind of facility. You have to do this. In a lot of these states, even if it's legal, there, there are still rules. But as you see here, New York is not one of these states. So, so from what I've read, he could have had some kind of like a wildlife rehab license, but he didn't have that. Now, you could argue, why does he need that? He shouldn't need it. That's your choice. If you're, you know, housing a raccoon in a state where it's illegal, you, you know, you, and you're posting on Instagram and people know about what's going on, you know, you'll probably be aware of the fact that the state might come barging in and you're going to need to hire attorneys. Um, in Washington state, I covered a very interesting case of May the raccoon. Um, this is. This is May the raccoon. I'm just going to show you her picture real fast. I will show you the video in a second. May the raccoon was rescued by a couple in the Seattle area when she was very, very young. They said they looked for her mom. They couldn't find her mom. I don't know. I hear cases like this where the mom is around, but the people just took the baby. And I, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you my opinion about whether you should take a baby or not. Okay. I think in a lot of cases, you probably should just leave the baby alone. But fine, in this particular case, the baby is taken by the mom and dad, this West Seattle couple, and uh, saying that the raccoon's mom is gone. Okay, they said they tried to find a wildlife rehab that would take May, and no one would take May. They were just full up. So what were they going to do? Just abandon the baby? They say no. So they take in this raccoon and have her for several years. And they used to take her hiking. They put her on a leash. They would take her out for walks. She had a hammock in the backyard she would swing on. She would sleep on the couch like a cat 
she was treated like a cat or a dog. She had her own like denim pillow that she slept on. And one day they go hiking, uh, camping, sorry. They went camping in central Washington and the wildlife officers are letting him into the park and the environmental officer is letting him into the park, uh, and state fish and wildlife and say, what is that? Is that a raccoon? And I mean, they just were like, yeah, this is our raccoon. This is may they introduced her. They were not worried in any way, shape or form that they were going to have this animal confiscated. They didn't think they were doing anything wrong. Well, <laughs> word got back to, uh, headquarters and wildlife officers showed up at their West Seattle home and were like, you cannot have that raccoon. A long court case ensued because they wanted to keep May and the state was like, no, you can't. Now the state just kept saying it's illegal to have wildlife as a pet in Washington state. That was the reason it's the law. They're just enforcing the law. And what they would tell me is, well, we can't just have people taking home wildlife. Why? I mean, I don't really quite know. Maybe they would say diseases or whatever. I never really understood like why we had the law, but it was a law nonetheless. So anyway, I'm going to show you what ended up happening in a second, but let's go back first to peanut. I would love to hear what you all think about the peanut story. So please leave me a comment. Um, we're talking about the state here. So I figure I should bring this up. I am suing Washington state. I'm not suing them over wildlife. I'm suing them over free speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who has given to my free speech fight. Give sango.com slash Allison free speech fight. I was fired because I refused to stop interviewing people who had different perspectives about these particular issues. I have brought on doctors. I have brought on scientists. I have brought on state employees. I have brought on pilots, uh, truck drivers, <laughs> all kinds of people. And my bosses at the department of natural resources, which was my day job back in 2021 told me to keep my job. I had to stop interviewing anyone who had a different perspective on COVID policy than the States. The state had a vaccine mandate for COVID and obviously I was interviewing uh, all kinds of people with different perspectives on that. They said I was undermining their mandate. If I wanted to keep my job, I had to stop. I refused, told them I had a First Amendment right to continue. They fired me. I'm suing them over free speech. First Amendment and 14th Amendment violations. Give sango.com slash Allison free speech fight. What I want to show you is this uh, in this exclusive, okay, with um, I'm going to play this quick soundbite with uh, Mark here, who I have asked to come on the show. I have written him on Instagram. I don't know if he is going to write me back because I bet he gets a million <laughs> message requests, especially now. So I don't know. But Mark, if you're watching this, please come on my show. I'd like to hear from you directly. Let me play this and uh, end of this clip, okay? The beginning is just him explaining why he does porn <laughs> or how, how he does porn and how it's not related. Um, but I'm just going to play the part where he talks about the wildlife sanctuary. This is not about us wanting money. We want this place to live on in Peanuts' memory. And we want to change what's going on in the government. We want to pass this law to help animals. You know, the money that we will get, and if we win, the money will go to this sanctuary. We will stay here. Here's what's very, like, weird to me. And, and Mark brings this up, actually. Like, why didn't they just... Um... Why didn't they just quarantine the animals uh, and see if they died of rabies? Like, or put them in a wildlife sanctuary or something. Why did they euthanize them? Uh, okay, I know that there's a debate about whether rabies is even real. I'm not going to get into that one either. <laughs> That's totally like the terrain theory, germ theory debate. And uh, frankly, it's not one related to rabies that I am uh, spun up on enough to, to really give anything useful as far as information. But I will just say that debate is out there. It's worth looking into. Um, it's, it's worth looking into, but let, let's just use the state's own theory. Okay. And let's just follow it to the end. They say they had to kill the animal to test them for rabies. Let me tell you a quick little story about when I was a kid. My friend, Amanda had a pet squirrel. I think I was probably like eight or nine, went to spend the night at her house and her pet squirrel bit me in the hand. I didn't think anything of it. I was not scared, but my mom and dad, uh, were a little concerned when they saw the bite on my hand. My mom picked me up from Amanda's. She saw my hand. She asked what happened. I said, a squirrel bit me and she kind of freaked. <laughs> she kind of freaked. Um, she was very nervous, uh, that I was going to get rabies. And so they were calling poison control. My great, my grandfather, my dad's dad 
was a pediatrician. And so they called him to, you know, what are the symptoms of rabies? If Allison starts salivating and like bubbling at the mouth, you know, what, what should we do? And um, this is what they found out from poison control that rodents, this is the state's own, this is what the, the state science says. Okay. Now this is in Florida. I grew up in Florida. So this is not New York, but I'm assuming that this is like what these biologists believe or epidemiologists or whatever they are that, um, that a rodent, they say a rodent cannot live with rabies. So like a squirrel, they said, if a squirrel was a pet and kept in captivity, it can't have rabies because it would have died. That's what they say that it would have died by now of rabies. It could not live with this disease. And so if, so they basically told my parents to just forget about it. They, they act based on, you know, in a large part, public pressure and politics, because they're just doing the bidding of politicians. So, you know, is it really based in, you know, environmental standards? Who writes the environmental standards? And if a TV reporter like myself can stop them just based on public outcry, which wasn't even my intention. I wasn't doing the story to stop them. I was just doing the story to let people know what was going on and give the wildlife rehab a fair opportunity to discuss how they felt like that was government overreach. Then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we have this issue. I see my dog running down the road. I got to get her. I'm going to show you this video. <laughs> we have this issue with them saying, Hey, you know, we can do, we, we can stop. Like, well, why could you stop if it was based on science? Watch May the raccoon. Let me go grab my dog. It was the final hearing in a months long legal battle over this raccoon. The raccoon named May was seized from her West Seattle home by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. It is illegal to have a pet raccoon in Washington. King 5's Allison Morrow was in that hearing today. Allison, sounds like it got pretty emotional. There were a lot of tears, in part because, of course, this family has had this raccoon for seven. Uh, now it's been eight years since they found her. Take a look at this video. Uh, you can see May swimming in her backyard pond. She lived with the Greer family in West Seattle. They say no wildlife rehab would take her after they found her as a baby. They took her as a sub permit, excuse me, from another wildlife rehab, but that went out of business. The state said you can't keep a raccoon without a permit. So she's now in another wildlife rehab, very different from where she used to live. She's spoiled rotten at home. She slept on the sofa, you know, she got to eat whenever she wanted to. She had cats to play with whenever she wanted to. She didn't have to climb up fencing to go to bed. The parking lot cage is kind of rough. That's all. What we viewed of it. That's all. So the hearing officer says he will take his time with this decision and announce it in writing at a later date. Again, now May's living in a facility where she's basically in a parking lot in a cage with another raccoon. Uh, she used to sleep on a denim pillow. She has this enclosure with a hammock mm. out in her backyard. So the family says that they want her to come home because that's the life she's used to. The state says, nope, got to follow the rules. Also, a lot of people might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? I mean, they raised this from a little tiny thing. Um, why is the state so, uh, I guess, thoughtful? Uh, so intent, intent on her not going yeah, back to yeah. the Greer's. I think it's because at this point, they're worried that May could become a precedent for future raccoon cases. What happens if May is allowed to come home and other people find raccoons around Seattle or anywhere else in Washington, take them home and look to May in future court cases saying, hey, if they were allowed to take home that raccoon and keep her why can't we? So I really think this is larger than just May. And that's probably why the state is really putting their foot down about it. You know, the the owners think someone someone ratted them out because they were mad. They had this wildlife rehab and maybe some connection to the OnlyFans. They were mad that people had an OnlyFans. I, I don't know. I and The state's not going to tell us and there's no way to really know. Typically, there there are complaints. That's how the state finds out about this stuff. But sometimes, you know, like I said, in, in the case of May the Raccoon, the state finds out about it because, hey, like a state officer sees that there's a squirrel wearing a cowboy hat living in New York. Um, Big picture here, I guess the only thing I really, really wanted people to take home is not whether you you should or should not be able to have a pet squirrel. But... <sighs> But to know that environmental agencies, wildlife agencies, 
are often, if not always, going to tell you they had to do this. They had to do it. They just had no other choice. Friends, this is not true. They always have another choice. They always have another choice. 